So this is the dog yard where the uh, sled dogs um, stay. They have their own space, their own comfort zone. Um, these are the names. There is one that's called Seven of Nine. This is me getting over my fear of big dogs. I think this was um, the last time we saw the dogs before we left, too. Um, so the other students were also saying bye to the dogs that they like. So yeah, they have their own little house, water, and food bowl. I believe this was one of the front dogs um, for the second uh, sled.
So this is the map of where we were dropped off here at Fall Lake. Let me zoom in. This is the most I can zoom in, but so at Fall Lake was when we were dropped off and then um, we went mushing or sledding over um, this lake or bay, this is Smukluk Bay um, or Fall Lake. Yeah, Fall Lake. So, mushed over here. Um, I believe this is where we spotted the the fox or wolf. And then we went into the forest area. And it's called Four Mile Portage. And um, I'm guessing it's a four mile um, trek. And then there's Hoist Bay. Um, so we got to. I believe we stayed somewhere around around here. Um, I was skiing for this part of the trip. Um, we would ski and the dogs would follow the marks in the snow. Um, and then, so yeah, we stayed most nights here like three or four nights the my solo was over here um there were four, four students after the two left so our solo was from midday to the mo next morning um so yeah um, mine was the closest to the the main you know place where we camped and then it was like right over here on the just a few feet away but uh f so during solo you're supposed to like um you know have your solitude time they give you ramen uh a pot a little uh saw mm matchsticks and and you get to take all the stuff you brought um, along with mats for sleeping on and then there's also one tarp that they give you so you're supposed to find a place to build a shelter with the twine that they also give you and then uh, there's a sleeping bag 
I built mine. It took me like an hour or two hours to set that up, figure out where I wanted to stay for the night. Um, there was a blizzard mid, I guess midnight to morning. Um, I, I built a fire. So you're supposed to build a fire to heat up one liter of water to put in your one of your uh, Nalgene bottles. The instructors brought a second Nalgene bottle filled with hot water as like it serves as a heater because um, the Nalgene bottle is like encased in uh, foam and uh, it keeps most of the heat in and you're also supposed to drink it right as you wake up drink one whole liter ideally um so yeah so build a fire okay so first set up shelter go into the woods and get some uh wood some like kindling like small twigs um and uh birch bark which uh, which is like really compostable and then what else then bigger um, branches like um, two finger width um, wide sort of thing and then it like I was able to get fire with the first match that I tried and then uh, it takes so much wood to keep fire alive enough to, um, you know, stay alive for a while. Um, I I was able to heat water. Uh, first, you're supposed to like collect some snow and then put in some water before you heat it because snow burns. Um, so yeah, let's see, let's zoom out here. So yeah, um, I also spilled water on the fire multiple times because there was nothing to keep it up. There was no like tripod to keep the uh, pot up, so I, um, like balanced it on a stick so yeah okay so this is um, one of the instructors the guy on the left in the middle um, is um, so basically all of them are instructors um, some stay at the camp to you know like help out with uh, cooking uh, and prepping for other course um, students to come in. Um, everything goes by really fast, so you have to be on your toes, basically. sure if this was day the first day or yeah the first day actually yeah um the, this this person at the end was me <laughs> in red um overall and um light grayish bluish um or light navy blue pants So notice how you would flip over the sleigh. So that um, makes the dogs stop. Because once you lift it up, they're off. So. Another note about um, one thing that um, 
that you will practice is how to take care of yourself first and then secondary you take care of others um, so ways of taking care of yourself is drinking plenty of water um, eat plenty of food especially at dinner time and um, stay dry as much as you can um, and also stay golden or rosy there's different terminologies that we agreed upon and golden means um, you're just you're warm and then rosy is where you're like um, more than warm you're um, sweating but you don't want to be green or blue green is less than um, golden that's where you start you're you're cold and um, like parts of your extremities will start uh, freezing and that's blue blue is where you don't want to be that's where um, um, it's dangerous because your fingers can freeze and your toes can freeze and it's gonna be hard to recover from uh, cold injuries like that okay so this is the um, I guess the brand for Outward Bound in general is the model is to serve to strive and not to yield the specific campus is Voyager um, and it's been running since the mid 60s and Grace the lady on the left is the other instructor and the guy on the right is Eli so we had two instructors here are the pictures of um, instructors and students who completed and graduated so um, it's obvious which one is me <laughs> so there were four students and two instructors Silly picture. I believe this was um, let's see the third day after we slept um, we slept out on the lake uh, the first time well the very first time was at the campus and then we were dropped off at Fall Lake and then um, then we we mushed to a spot, camped, and then um, yeah. So I believe this is the third day mushing to our fourth day camping area. Um, so I think. I don't know which one I was but um there's a pole here like the the orange thing that is the skiers would strap that to their waist and pull that and the dunks are supposed to follow it so this day there was a lot of blizzard um, 
so the instructors couldn't see exactly where they were heading um so we were all like looking at the map trying to figure out okay which way was our planned route and it's called um the trail that others leave behind is called mushers highway and mushers highway there's like a facebook group apparently where um people talk about okay um to figure out which way to go um people would leave branches in the snow so branches or like twigs so that when you're you know out looking you know in the distance and like everything blends together so um yeah so you're supposed to like follow the twigs and just like you're supposed to like i guess get to the next spot where like if you get to the woods then there will be a clear trail in the woods for you so there's a lot of collaboration between folks who uh, ski and mush another video from um there's no audio but um, you couldn't guess like there was a lot of barking but oh another thing to note about dog sledding um it's in the name there will be a lot of dogs so there will be a lot of barking um and when you camp for the night they will be on like um, a line, like on leashes on a line, and it'll be like right where you sleep. So there will be a lot of barking at night as well. Um, and you, we take care of the dogs, we uh, take the harness off and um, make sure they're not like, um, frozen or dehydrated uh, so there's this thing called vet vet check um, we feed them clean their poop I think their poop is collected and like put in the woods like 150 feet into the woods um, for humans um, or maybe they can just poop anywhere and it's okay but for humans you have to go 150 feet at least uh, into the woods away from the river to poop but you can pee anywhere um, try not to pee you know uh, don't pee where there's um, the water hole that people dig into the uh, the river or the lake um when i was out there we had to dig like almost two feet into the frozen lake to get water it was so exhausting <laughs> but it's a nice way of staying warm um but yeah and then um you end up eating with the same inner gloves that you use to um, handle the dogs and apparently the germs that dogs have don't affect humans so it's okay to eat with the same gloves i don't know but anyways i've survived and plenty of people have survived so yeah, so you'll have to be okay with that too. So here you can see another um, place where we stopped. Um, 
there's plenty of times where we stop and check in on each other um you know grab a drink and eat a snack so it's not constant movement um and um you should be okay with that so okay so this is the second day of the trip I am over here um, or you, I guess you can't see the cursor making this peace sign so you get your own duffel bag um, here is the sled that we pack every day we travel or every time we travel to another spot we would pack this um, there's a whole system for packing sleds these are the mats and there's dog food here um, I think this has something to do with dogs as well. This is the metal that we put wood on to burn stuff, uh, to burn wood. Uh, so I have two sleds here. Um, so the second day after our first night out, um, camped outside, uh, we do our last minute bathroom breaks and then bathroom breaks inside a toilet <laughs> um, and then pack it and uh, lift it up to this um, I don't know what the term is but it is pulled by a truck so we pack it lift it up slide it down and it's locked down and we drove to the dog um, camp to pick the dogs that we were gonna take we took a total of 11 dogs uh, six dogs on the first sled and five on the second one So one of the injuries uh, that gave me a sizable bruise that I'm still healing from was from a polk. So it was the first one here. I, I fell off the sled while the dogs were pulling us and then this one nicked my inner thigh and then I rolled and then this one passed, thankfully. Oh gosh, that was scary. But um, one thing I would say is um, I got really good at um, falling from sleds without being hurt, mostly, at least, except for that time. So, um,. The, you, I think it was the second night so we this is the first encampment where we put up shelter set up a fireplace over here um, and we slept under a tarp so there's a tarp um, under us and then a tarp above so I slept on the farthest side of this tent over here. Um, and, uh, there was, I think there was a blizzard that night. Yeah. 
so this the person in red that is me nibbling on something uh taking this these gog this goggle was a lifesaver because i would wear it when there's a blizzard um oh and i also wore uh contact lenses during this time um most of the days um and i noticed i didn't have um i didn't pay attention to all the like little particles and dust that normally get on your contact lens um since i was outdoors doing unfamiliar things i think my body was like oh this is the least of our concerns so so wearing these goggles also helped with whenever we go out into the woods to collect wood um it kept me from getting my eyes scratched from by twinks so get goggles that fit over if you wear um prescription glasses make sure to get goggles that fit over the glasses and um, also protect your eyes from UV rays and from the bright uh, sun um, which becomes even stronger with the snow so this this was when we first started mushing um, the dogs were on a line leashed to a metal line waiting to take off um so when you are mushing one person will be on one of these legs if you can see here let me see if i can zoom out a bit so here if you can see there's two legs here so one person will be on one and the other person on the next and you know create a system of who holds how you're going to hold this part this is where you hold it with your hands um and this little pouch little kangaroo pouch is where you can keep your nalgene bottle bottle for a quick you know drink um and snack as well um or you could just put it in your jacket so this is a good example of the snack system we got um we would use a plastic container more sturdy kind of plastic and use that put um pick like nuts and granola and cheese and salami whatever you're okay with uh put it in here as second during second breakfast or like in the morning there's like first breakfast instructors will uh cook something um and then give it to you early in the morning eat that and then you will pick there's this thing called second breakfast after that you're gonna drink your Nalgene bottle and make like oatmeal you can make coffee um, tea all that stuff so so this is the kind of snacks that we ate during the day or for lunch basically